Okay, we're back today and we're going to talk about another element of winds, in this case here, the Coriolis effect and friction. Now it's useful if you go back and take a look at the other parts so that you know what we're talking about. But real quickly, quickly, let's review here. So winds are just basically an attempt to equalize pressure and winds always blow from a high to a low. Okay, I've drawn this over here. We can symbolize, you know, looking straight down, pressure with isobars. Okay, I've taken this and made a profile of it. So we might have a high pressure and that's where, you know, molecules stack up and they create a more intense area. And we can measure that in barometric pressure. And then over in here, less pressure or a low. And we talked about the gradient. I used a ball to kind of show how it just simply goes down a hill, right? And that's pretty simple. But today I wanted to add another element called the Coriolis effect, sometimes known as the force. Okay, so here we are. We're going to recreate the, the gradient. Okay, so we just have a ball. Boom, it goes down the slope. Now, what happens if we could take the wind right here and make it as it goes down turn to the right? That is going to be the Coriolis force. Okay, it's going to move down and there's going to be another magical effect or force that pulls it to the right. So how is that? How is it that we can magically move this ball to the right? Well, I think some of the best examples are on the internet where people are on a carousel in a park, the ones that you can, yourself can push, and you throw the ball to the person at first while it's not moving. And sure enough, you just throw it over to, let's say, John Doe. But the minute you start moving that thing and you throw the ball, the ball turns to the right or whichever direction you're spinning the carousel and you can't catch it. The target essentially, you, have moved out from underneath the ball. If you get up in a tree and look down, you'd actually see the thing just going straight. So it is an apparent deflection to the right. Uh, again, those demonstrations are better than I can do here. Now let me just show you with uh, a couple of them that I have that I use in the classroom. One is this one right here. And basically, actually, let's see if I can't find something better for a background. Okay, so here we have this example of a plane being shot or, you know, a rocket shooting down to New York or a plane flying to New York from the north. And you can see that the target has moved out from underneath it, okay? Now, this is most apparent at the, as you head toward the poles, and least, in fact, none at the equator because, in fact, the target doesn't move out from underneath it. So let me show you this on the globe now. All right, so here we are. Now the Earth turns to the east, okay? And as it turns to the east, if you are going to shoot a rocket, which is going fairly quickly, guess what? Your target went over here. It went to the right, and your rocket then appears to have gone to the right as well. The Earth from the top is moving. Actually, everything's kind of reversed for me, counterclockwise. But as you look down, you'll see the rocket actually ends up somewhere over here instead of, let's say, on the east coast. <laughs> Okay, I've got one other demonstration to show you, which kind of shows you what's going on. It, to be honest, if you want to be critical, it's not exactly the Coriolis force, but it's good enough. So let's take a look. Let's take this stuff off. Okay, and I'm going to take a couple pens here. One is I'm going to use the red pen, and that's our target. Okay, <clears throat> and then the next thing is to take this blue pen. And what I'm going to do is, as I start to shoot my pen toward the target, I'm actually going to move the board. I'm going to push it. Uh, the window is kind of in the way here, so let me move it over here. And, <clears throat> all right, so here we go. Ready, set, go. And sure enough, it moved it to the right. So I want to put a few things about the Coriolis force that you have to remember. All right? Number one, does it turn to the right or the left? It's to the right in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, so it's right in the Northern Hemisphere. All right, so that's the, and it is the opposite in the Southern Hemisphere, okay? Uh, and uh, normally I'm just gonna stick with everything in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, the second thing about it is that, you know, at the equator, 
the target will not move out from underneath it. And so basically it's non-existent. Um, <clears throat> we're going to mention hurricanes here as a low pressure system and no hurricane has ever crossed the the equator <clears throat> because the Coriolis force dissipates. Okay, and so number number one, it turns to the right in the northern hemisphere, don't forget it. Number two, the equator is non-existent and as you head toward the poles it gets stronger. Okay, so hopefully you're getting this. Number one, we have the pressure gradient Number two, we have this Coriolis effect. I like to call it a force. It is an apparent force. It's definitely real in that it turns the winds to the right. So I want us to think of another analogy. It's not quite right, but it's good enough. I get students that go outside and we get on a rope and one person's I call the Coriolis force and the other person I call pressure gradient and we have this tug of war. And so those two forces can actually work in conjunction and essentially balance themselves out, especially if they're equal, right? If the Coriolis force has the same force as, let's say, pressure gradient, like the ball rolling down the hill. So let's take a look here. All right, so I'll erase all this. And by the way, in case you didn't get the right part, I know students of mine get a little confused. You gotta go upside down and look at that arrow turning to the right. Okay, so the next thing is, you know, if you had, let's, let's just abbreviate it, PG here, and then Coriolis for short, you could kind of have this tug of war, or, you know, these two forces could be balanced. And we actually do have upper level winds that are called, kind of a funny name, it's like, really? Is it, do they have to come up with all these names? These meteorologists, geographer folks. Uh, but it's, anyway, it's called geostrophic uh, winds or geostrophic and basically what is that those are like um, you know I think a good example of that is uh, the jet stream okay for example the polar jet stream these are more theoretical than real but you know the westerlies they snake all the way around the world uh, they don't keep spinning one way or the other right so here's our official diagram to show that and I want to zoom in on that here and show you a couple things that are really important in regards to geostrophic winds. Okay, so we have two forces. We've got pressure gradient and the Coriolis force. Look at this diagram. Uh-oh. Looks kind of scary to me, right? Well, let's take a look at something called, I wrote this over in here, geostrophic winds. Okay, and what the heck is that? One thing we've all heard of is the jet stream. So that's probably the best, you know, real world example. But basically what this is, is both of the forces, the gradient of the pressure, pressure gradient, and Coriolis force are balanced in the upper atmosphere. So we can call them the upper, upper atmosphere winds. Um, these are the geostrophic winds, okay? And um, let's take a look at this diagram. So basically, uh, air, for example, in a low pressure would go into, a bowl, see, we've got a bowl right in here, so uh, air would actually go into that bowl, all right? And so here we have the blue arrows representing air that is going into the pressure gradient. However, as air accelerates, all right, and uh, in the upper atmosphere where there's no friction, we're gonna finish with that, um, you know, basically as the arrows are being pulled to the right, the Coriolis pulls it to the right and has this little tug of war. I even use my students sometimes when we get a rope and I call a student pressure gradient and maybe I'm Coriolis and we have this tug of war and you know we can just walk along and then go straight or maybe one force is a little stronger maybe Coriolis starts to pull it to the right okay or they're even in this case here and they tend to spiral now there is one thing about the Coriolis force we've got to add it turns to the right and also it's weak at the equator non-existent but also as it as the wind speed slows down so does the Coriolis force so I wanted to take a look at our third and final element friction and then maybe talk about hurricanes just for fun <laughs>